guys, welcome back to my channel. We are at the tail end of the month of August of my full month of nothing new. And today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite products from the month of August. This will be an especially exciting one because this month I didn't buy any new makeup. So there are a lot of old favorites in here, some rediscovered finds, some things that have been longtime favorites, and even a couple of things that I never knew I loved. Like I've had them a long time and I didn't know that I loved them. These are just the things that really, really stood out to me. I'm excited to share them with you guys. I hope that you guys are excited. Before we jump into it, I wanna give a special welcome as always to anyone that is new here. So happy to have you here. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure that you are subscribed before you leave and that your notifications are turned on if you'd like to be notified every time I upload a new video. And with all of that said, let's get to it. All right guys, so let's start out with the complexion product. So I have a foundation this month that really impressed me. I used it quite a bit and it just, it kept being the one that I wanted to reach for. And I have used it before. It is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. I've had this foundation for a while. I wanna say we're getting close to a year probably with this thing. I wanna say, I think I tried it out last fall or last winter. I liked it the first time I tried it. It is possible maybe it even made it into a favorites video, but it kind of got forgotten about as happens as someone that tries out way too much makeup. So when I pulled this one back out this month and kind of refamiliarized myself with it, I was very impressed. I really like this. It's just a good solid foundation for me. It's hydrating, but it's not super like glossy or dewy. Good solid medium coverage. It's actually a really good shade match for me right now, which I always love. I love when a foundation right out of the pump just matches me, which is super, super rare. And I should probably mention the shade. The shade is Light 50W. This is just an all around really good foundation for me. Nice and lightweight. I wouldn't say it's like super long wear or smudge proof. It's not like L'Oreal infallible type of foundation, but it does last well on me, especially if I powder the areas that I tend to get settling into lines, like on my forehead and along my smile lines. Very happy with this one. Glad I made a little bit more of a dent in this this last month. And the one that, it's the one that stood out to me the most of the other foundations that I kind of cycled through. This is the one that I look forward to reaching for the most. Have another repeat product. I probably should have mentioned this one first. It is a primer, I guess you could say. Actually, it's an oil. It's from Flower Beauty. It's the Celestial Skin Supernova no, I have that backwards. Supernova Celestial Skin Elixir. This is basically just a really lightweight oil. So I've been using my Ordinary Squaw Lane oil. I officially ran out of that midway through this last month. And because I was doing a no buy, I can just go out and buy some more. So I substituted this in. So I like to use this oil after I've moisturized, after I've done my morning skincare routine, I've added my moisturizer. I will put this immediately on top of my moisturizer. And I think it kind of like locks in my moisturizer and keeps it really, really hydrating all day long, which I need in certain areas. I try to avoid putting this on the center of my forehead, kind of along the, around my T-zone because that's where I can naturally, I can get oily. I mean, I do not have oily skin by any means, but if I put an oil in that area, I will get oily. So I like to really concentrate this on the outside part of my face where I tend to get dry throughout the day and it really helps to prevent that from happening. The same is true with the squalane. I really like that as an oil as well because it's super lightweight and this one is also very, very lightweight. So if you have very dry skin and you like a tiny bit of an oil, underneath your foundation. This is a really nice one. I try not to put this on immediately before I put my foundation on. I want a good amount of time for this to soak in. So I usually will give this about 30 minutes or so, which is why I usually put this on during my skincare routine. But I really like how hydrating it is. It has good skincare ingredients in it and it's I've really been enjoying it. Let's talk about a concealer. I have you guys to thank for this one. It is the Hydrating Camo Concealer. I've had this concealer for a very long time. I liked it initially when I first tried it out, but I remember I wasn't sure if I like this one better than the original Camel Concealer, which is funny because now that I've actually used them both this month after using this one after you guys recommended it and I really loved it. Then I went back to using the original Camel one and after doing that, I noticed a difference between them. This one definitely is more hydrating on my skin. It gives me really good coverage though. It's not cakey at all. I even noticed, and this is actually not true with most e.l.f. complexion products, they can sometimes tend to break me out if I use them too consistently. I know the original Camel Concealer, if I use it like five or six days in a row, I'll tend to get a couple of breakouts, especially along this area of my skin. And I haven't noticed that with this one. I've been using it very regularly for the last two and a half, three weeks. And I just love it. I think it's a great concealer. I don't know that you can beat the value of this concealer anywhere. I mean, there's a ton of product in here and they're pretty dang affordable. I have two shades, the shade Fair Warm, which is a little too light for me. In fact, it's quite a bit too light for me, but I like combining these two shades together. The shade is Medium Sand. Very happy I pulled this back out this month and I understand now why so many of you guys recommended this one. It is really, really good. I also wanted to mention the Charlotte Tilbury 
Hollywood Flawless filter. This is made into many types of favorites videos before. I've had it for a long time. I've loved it ever since I first tried it out. I recently saw that Allie Glines mentioned this in a video of products she thought you would not regret buying or something along those lines and I would have to 100% agree with her even though this is super pricey I just don't know that there's anything out there quite like this keep in mind I have not yet tried out the Maybelline 4-in-1 that people have been saying is a dupe for this I am determined to do that in the month of September because I really need to find out for myself if it's a dupe because so many people have said that it is but a few people have said that it's not and if you read the reviews on the Ulta website I was surprised it didn't get very good reviews so I'm very curious about that supposed dupe I'll definitely be trying it out but you guys this stuff is just incredible. I've never felt a liquid product that feels quite as fancy as this. I mean, not just the bottle, the actual product inside, which usually with high-end products, what makes them so special is their packaging. That's true with this, but also this magical substance inside truly is like, like it's like something they would make in Harry Potter. It's just magical. I mean, it's super, super creamy. I mean, luxuriously silky creamy. Like there's nothing quite like this. It's so lovely. It's reflective, but it blends really nicely. I mean, I put a ton of product on the back of my hand. What a, what a waste, Mandy. I love using this, especially as a liquid highlight. Some people like using it as a primer. Honestly, I think I've tried that once and I thought, mm, I'm not covering that beautiful shine up with foundation. It is so pretty. I absolutely love it and i've used it quite a few times this last month and was just reminded again which i know i've mentioned a hundred times before but it is just so so nice it's it's amazing i did notice last time i was on sephora's website that they make a, i think a mini bottle of this now i actually would recommend getting the mini even though i'm sure the value is not going to be quite as much if you are someone that doesn't use their very fancy high-end products in your daily makeup routine maybe you kind of like to save those fancier makeup items you can see that i'm completely describing myself here it might be a good idea to get the smaller bottle especially if you imagine that you might use this as a liquid highlight rather than a primer which is how i use it i use the tiniest amount of product this thing's going to last me forever. I'm sure people will scold me for not throwing away after four years when I continue to feature this in videos over the next couple of years because I have had this for over a year now but it's still holding up really nicely. I am trying to use it more often because it is something that I really love and I think it's a shame to save that. Okay I have a lip gloss to share with you guys. This is an older lip gloss that I've had for quite a while. I want to say I've had it for more than a year now. I should probably get a move on using this one too. Man that is the story of my life. I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> saying that about things. It's the Persona lip gloss specifically in the shade Coral. So I've been a longtime fan of the Persona glosses. I love them. Next to my Fenty glosses, they're my favorite higher-end lip gloss. And normally the two that I love and use the most, the ones that are actually getting close to being gone, are Honey and the shade Pink. I love these two. I've been mentioning them off and on in favorites videos a lot over the last couple of years. I've also had Coral for a long time, but this has kind of taken a back seat to those two shades. However, I've been using it a lot this month, and I just think this is such a beautiful shade of gloss, especially if you want something on your lips that's going to give you quite a bit of color and that's going to be somewhat brightening. So I'm actually, I am wearing a little bit. It's kind of worn off now because I've had it on for a while, but I didn't want to reapply. I wanted to reapply it live on camera for you guys so you guys could kind of see the amount of color that this gives and just the shade of it. So it's a obviously a coral, but I like that there's a touch of, it's more of a like pinky coral than a orangey coral. I mean, it has a good amount of orange in it, obviously, but it shows up with a touch of pink on the lips, which you guys know, I love a little bit of pink on my lips. Their gloss formula is great. It smells nice. It gives a good amount of shine, but it also gives quite a bit of color. It gives more color than the Fenty glosses give. So I don't know why this took a back seat for so long. I've been using it a lot this month, and the more I use it, the more I really, really love it. So let's talk about a couple of eyeshadow palettes. I used a lot of old favorite eyeshadow palettes this month. I could probably mention 15 eyeshadow palettes for you guys, but I didn't want to do that. I only wanted to mention the ones that stood out above the rest. First one is from Colourpop. This is actually one I don't think I've shown you guys on camera. It's one of their little quads. This one is in the shade or the version Sorbet. If you are into berry tones and like cooler-ish berry tones, you will love this. This is so, so beautiful. I'm pretty sure I've seen quite a few people talk about this specific palette. I love it. I've had it for a while. I think I've dabbled in it, but as a whole, I haven't used the whole eye palette for a complete look until this month, but I've been dipping into this several times, which is saying something because I've been really trying to cycle through my eyeshadow palettes this month and not use the same thing over and over again, but this one keeps calling my name. So let me give these a swatch for you guys. So here are the two matte shades. This one is, oh, that's a little, 
swash that one a little heavy. So this one obviously is really nice and rich and deep. You guys probably know how much I love shades like this on my outer corner. This one right here is a perfect transition shade. You can definitely build this up and get some depth out of it. Or if you just like something a little bit softer and not quite going this dark in your outer corner along that like outer V area. It's such a beautiful dusty rose kind of shade. It is lovely. And I cannot say enough good things about these two lid shades. So this one right here has almost a blue tone to it. It feels a little bit like almost like one of their super shocks, but it's not quite that creamy. It's a little bit more sheer, but very, very sparkly. I absolutely love it. And then this one right here is a little bit more pink and a little bit more opaque. Look how beautiful that is. They're all just absolutely stunning. You can get a beautiful, glamorous, but not too glamorous look out of this palette really quickly. It's small. The packaging is cute. I just think it's out of the park awesome. Another one that really stood out to me this month, and this is one that I didn't pull out till towards the end of the month. So this was like a week ago, which I know means I haven't been using it that long, but this is a palette I'm very familiar with, and I was just reminded of how exceptional this palette is, and it's the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Palette. I know I've had some criticisms about this over the years. I mean, there's some things I really love about this one, and I actually, my initial criticisms, I will say, have waned a little bit because I've actually learned to love these glitters. I've used this palette just a handful of times since I did my celebrity makeup look video, but this, in that video, this palette just really impressed me with how easy it was to blend, especially when you're working with some of her darker shades. She really has formulated a great matte formula specifically for these like darker shades right here. They blend like a dream. They're just so easy to work with. Sometimes those kind of shades really intimidate me, not just because of how dark they are, but how difficult dark shades can sometimes be to work with. And these ones are definitely not like that. I also think that her finishes in here are so well done. It's just such a great simple palette. There's so many different looks you can come up with, even though it looks like you basically get six different shades four times over, but there really are pretty significant differences in the finishes and the, what you can do with those different finishes. It's just so impressive to me. The more I use it, the more I appreciate the quality of this palette. It's definitely been neglected for the last several months, but it's one that I feel like I need to pull out and use more often because it is so, so good. And the looks that come out of it look extra professional, if I can say that, because they're just so easy to work with. Let's jump back over to complexion. I just found this floating underneath an eyeshadow palette and realized I forgot to mention it while we were talking about complexion products, but it's a highlighter and it is Becca's Opal. This is one of the highlighters that when I asked you guys what your holy grail highlighters were, this one was in there quite a bit. I've had this one for a very long time. I've always liked it, but I've been using it a lot over this last month and it is really, really good. Like there's a reason that so many people love this one. Now, would I say that I would go out and buy the full size of this or that you can't get a highlighter that's just as good as this one at the drugstore? Probably not. In fact, I think I like my Revlon one. I, I'm, that's another one. I love the Revlon Skin Lights highlighter. I think it's the best highlighter at the drugstore. It is incredible. But this one is also really beautiful. The shade of this is so, so lovely. There it is swatched right there. I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but it is just so beautiful. I've been loving this this last month. It's one of the ones I've been reaching for the very most and definitely a highlighter I've been happy to kind of rediscover as a favorite this last month. Okay, back over to eyeshadows. I have to do it. I have to talk for just a sec about Sydney Grace. Hear me out. I know I've been talking about them a lot recently. I mentioned them last month's favorites video. I may have mentioned them in the month before that's favorites video, not to mention them many times in the last year that I have talked about them. But in July, as you guys know, they had their sale and I got my sale products literally the day before I started my full month of nothing new. So I knew I couldn't really talk about them during the month of August, but I definitely used some of the stuff that I got. And man, wouldn't you know it, it blew me away. And I even have some new discoveries from them. But first I'm gonna talk about a couple of eyeshadows. So I did see a lot of people agree that Sydney Grace eyeshadows were their holy grails when I did that poll on Instagram about your holy grail eyeshadows. A lot of you did mention the Sydney Grace singles. And I actually had a comment from someone asking about some cooler toned options from Sydney Grace, some recommendations. So I had these four right here. Now one of these is a brand new shade that I just got during their sale. I think it's a new shade to them, like it's a new shade that they've more recently created. And I'm telling you guys, this shade gives me complete Natasha Denona glam vibes. It is so, so beautiful. It is called Biscotti. It's basically a silvery taupe. Oh my goodness, look at that right there. It is completely metallic and reflective and beautiful. You guys know I love shades like this. Anything that gives me that kind of sparkly metallic goodness or that somehow mimics like a fish scale or a mermaid tail. I'm gonna love it. There is no doubt. And this one is so, 
so pretty. Beautiful if you like cooler tones. And if by chance this level of reflectiveness intimidates you, maybe you don't want something that reflective on your lid, you can use this or apply this with a fluffy brush. You'll get a little bit more of a sheer application that will be just more subtle. As for these shades right here, I wanted to also mention these two. This one is also new to me. It looks very simple. It is quite simple. It's the shade Drift. It's basically a white that has like a bit of like, I don't know, softness to it. I wouldn't call it a cream because it's not warm. It actually reminds me a little bit of that Wet n Wild shade, but not quite as warm, like not quite as peach tone. This one's a little bit more, I don't, I don't want to say gray though, because that sounds very unappealing. It's just like a soft eggshell sort of white. It's really, really pretty though. If you like something more matte, if you want a good like shade for under your brow bone or something to pop on your inner lid that's not going to be reflective or sparkly, this is really, really beautiful. I've been using this a lot and really impressed with how beautiful it looks on my lid and especially how versatile it is. You can use it in so many different ways. This shade right here is San Jose. This is one of my favorite transition shades. It's like the perfect transition shade for my skin tone. Now this is not going to be true for everyone because it is quite light. So this would be more suitable as a transition shade for those of you that have light to fair skin. But this has a really interesting like undertone to it. It's slightly warm and cool at the same time. It's like brown and gray and peach all at the same time. I know I'm completely contradicting myself, but this is so beautiful with a cool toned eye because it gives you a touch of warmth without being too warm. I'm a big fan of adding something warm in your crease when you're doing a cool tone look. If you've ever tried a cool tone look and you thought that just does not look good on me, it's too cool, maybe looks too washed out or ashy, try adding something warm in your crease and then put the cool tones everywhere else. It makes it a little bit more flattering, at least in my opinion on me personally. And then last but not least is this shade right here. It is the shade Keep Smiling. This is a new one to me as well. It is so pretty. This is a very dark shade. But it's like a cool tone brown that has a touch of warm purple in it. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, you guys. They're deep browns. They're almost creamy. They actually kind of remind me of the Natasha Denona cream to powder formula, but not quite that level of like true creaminess, but they have some sort of like creamy quality to them that is just so easy to work with and so easy to blend. I absolutely love it. So this is my combo recommendation. We've got Biscotti, we've got Drift, San Jose, and then Keep Smiling. This would be a perfect cool toned look in my opinion. And if you are someone that has more medium to deep toned skin, I would just swap out this shade right here with something else that's gonna be, or work a little bit better for your skin tone. I usually like for my transition shade to just be a shade that's slightly warm that's just like a half shade darker than my natural skin tone. So that's my Sydney Grace recommendation. I've been loving these shades this last month. Honestly, all the shades from them. I've been really having fun mixing and matching all of the singles that I have. And you guys, I'm getting way up there. I think I almost have all of their singles. It's kind of become a crazy addiction for me. But again, I just, I just don't think anyone would be disappointed in Sydney Grace eyeshadows. And one more surprise favorite from Sydney Grace is actually a blush of theirs. This is the shade Flower Crown. So this was sent to me in one of their mystery bags that I got during their sale. This is heavenly. It is absolutely stunning. It's such a pretty shade. It's like a cool toned pink that has a hint of a sheen to it. I guess I'd call it like a true satin blush, but this is just the prettiest, prettiest shade. Yeah, it has quite a bit of sheen. Look at that. On my cheeks, it doesn't look that reflective or sparkly. It just looks so flattering on the cheeks. I absolutely love this. I've been reaching for this almost constantly unless I'm doing like an orange eye. This is just so, so beautiful. I also have a couple of highlighters from them that I, I want to talk about today. I love them all, but I, I need a little bit more time with the shades to decide which one I like the best. But as far as the blush, I mean, this instantly I fell in love with. And I'm a little bit worried that now that I have this one, I might have to try all of them just like I did with the eyeshadows. Sydney Grace. Here you go, just take all my money. I'm happy to give it to you. And there you have it, you guys. That is everything. Those are all the products I love during the month of August. I hope that you guys enjoyed my full month of nothing new. Thank you guys so much for your participation. Can't wait for September. We have some fun fall videos coming up. I love me some fall makeup. So that should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys again. I hope that you are all doing well. Let me remind you one more time to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Let's phrase that differently. Five different shades. That's six. Oh, Mandy. Math, Mandy. Math. Basic counting math. You and Charlie have been working on this together. You should be able to do this.